The SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2 portable SSD is fast. But is it too fast for the new M1 MacBooks? Let's find out. Hi, this is David of tech for baba a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, let's take a look at the SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2 portable SSD. It's rated twice as fast as version 1 at up to 2000 megabytes per second with the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 interface. But can this be too fast? Faster is always better, but what I found is none of our computers and laptops at home, including the new M1 MacBooks, can take advantage of this fast USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 transfer rate. Keep watching to see what speed I can get with this fast SSD and my recommendations. First, why do we need external storage like this one? Newer laptops these days like the latest M1 MacBooks and even the Mac Mini have the storage soldered down the motherboard so it cannot be upgraded later. But buying more built-in storage is quite expensive. For example, on the new M1 MacBook Air which costs $999, it costs us $800 more to go from 256GB to 2TB of storage. I struggle too often with having to offload family videos and photos from my 1TB internal drive that I'm always on the lookout for faster and cheaper external storage devices. I posted a video earlier on my long-term favorites, the Samsung T5 and T7 SSDs, linked here and below. This SanDisk Extreme Pro V2 costs a little bit more, but can potentially transfer data twice as fast as the T7. Okay, let's check it out. In addition to the drive, SanDisk includes two cables in the box, an USB Type-A to Type-C and an USB Type-C to Type-C cable. SanDisk only offers the Extreme Pro V2 in one colorway, 1TB and 2TB models are available now and looks like there will be a 4TB model soon. I have the 2TB here. They all look physically the same. The only way to tell them apart is by the size labeled in the back. It has the same design language as the older SanDisk Extreme SSDs. It's rugged with a mostly black color rubbery silicone shell. The Extreme Pro has an orange color aluminum frame you can see in the center, which helps with strength and heat dissipation. It's a bit bigger than the non-pro extreme SSDs at about 11 centimeters long by 5.8 centimeters wide and 1 centimeters thick. Just like the extreme SSDs, the USB-C port is on the bottom and there is a useful loop here on the corner for a key ring to latch onto. For reference, here is the extreme pro version 2 compared to the Samsung T7 I've been using for a while. The extreme pro is about the same width and thickness, just longer. It's still small enough to fit easily into a pocket. It may not look as sleek as the T7, but it's more rugged. The Extreme Pro V2 can survive a drop from 2 meters high and is rated IP55 water and dust resistance. can dunk it in water, but it'll survive splashing and running water, which is great. So how about the blazing fast 2000 megabytes per second transfer speed with its USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 interface? USB naming has been a mess the last few years. The latest is there is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 which can go up to 5 gigabits per second maximum throughput, an USB 3.2 Gen 2 or USB 3.1 Gen 2 which can go up to 10 gigabits per second, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 which can go up to 20 gigabits per second. I find the best way to differentiate is just to look at the maximum throughput or transfer speed an USB port can support, 5, 10, or 20 gigabits per second. Here is the speed I get connecting the Extreme Pro version 2 directly to my M1 MacBook Air, which supports USB 3.1 Gen 2 or just the one that can go up to 10 gigabits per second. Using AJA system test transferring a 4 gigabyte 4K video file, I get about 690 megabytes per second write and 855 megabyte per second read. Far from the 2000 megabytes per second this SSD is capable of. The throughput is definitely limited by the MacBook's USB ports. The Extreme Pro version 2 is about 10 to 20% faster than the T7, which transfer at about 580 megabytes per second write and 780 megabytes per second read. By the way, even though the USB ports on the M1 Max is spec up to 10 gigabits per second, they are a bit slower than those on the Intel Max for some reason. The workaround is to connect the drive through a Thunderbolt hub with 10 gigabits per second USB ports like the ones I've reviewed before. I'll put links to those videos here and in the descriptions. 
going through the hub, I can get about 5 to 10% increase in transfer speed with both SanDisk and Samsung drives. I've tried the Extreme Pro version 2 on my other Intel MacBooks and PCs, but since none of them support USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, I cannot take full advantage of this drive's fast 2000 megabytes per second throughput. The drive still works well, but just at a lower speed similar to drive rated 1000 megabytes per second. <laughs> Never thought I'd say this, but this drive is too fast for me. In fact, I found that USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 is not widely available at this time in early 2021. Not sure if it will be in a few months or will the new even faster USB 4 take over the market. For now, the quickest way to get USB 3.2 Gen 2x2's 20 gigabit per second speed is to build a PC with a motherboard that supports it, or add in USB PCIe cards such as the Oracle PCIe card to a desktop PC. It's too bad SanDisk doesn't make this drive with a Thunderbolt 3 interface, so more laptop can take advantage of its speed. At the current street price of $350, US the SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2 is more expensive than the older version 1 Extreme Pro and the Samsung T7. So if you are like me who only have computers or laptops such as the latest M1 Max with USB ports supporting up to 10 gigabits per second, the Extreme Pro version 2 SSD is too fast. Unless prices become the same, we're better off with cheaper USB 3.2 Gen 2 1000 megabytes per second throughput SSDs like version 1 Extreme Pro, the Nun Pro Extreme version 2, Samsung T7, or this tiny Sabrent SSD here. I plan to try out this Sabrent SSD which is even cheaper and this other much faster Thunderbolt 3 external SSD soon. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to be notified when these videos are posted. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please help me by smashing the like button and share. What external drives have you been using? What's your favorite so far? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.